And then he said, Paul, writing to the people of God. First reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all of your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said to his disciples, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you all solemnly, unless the wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it is for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen.
Jesus spoke about this hour had come. The hour when he would, his work on earth was finished, his mission was completed, and he would return back to the Father. His work was done. And I suppose he knew that sense of loss and grief that people would feel when he would go. And he knew the sense of grief when somebody had died because we're told he wept at the death of Lazarus' friend. But ultimately, Jesus' death would lead to a share in the glory of the Father. And that is the promise for all of us as well. He chose to share his life, his death, and his resurrection in glory with all of us. So his destiny is our destiny too. And that's why we gather here today to celebrate Jesus' funeral mass. To celebrate her life, as St. Paul said today, right into Colossians, her life in Christ. And that life in Christ for all of us isn't just when we're here on earth, yes. when we do our best to live the life that Jesus calls us to do, when we celebrate our faith, when we say our prayers, we go to Mass and celebrate the sacraments, and try to live as best we can. Our life in Christ continues beyond the darkness of death. And so we celebrate Peter's funeral Mass, our entry into the glory of Christ himself. Anita was a woman of great faith, simple faith, but very sincere and genuine faith as well. She said her prayers, she loved her Mass, especially here in this church in Castellan, where she came most of her life really, and was here up to the very end at Easter time. She loved to come and celebrate faith, not just as an individual, but to celebrate her faith with her local faith community as well. And that's so important on the journey of life. And I suppose as each was here only a couple of weeks ago, little did she think that her hour also more or less had come. Her hour of leaving this world, her hour which would leave her family and leave this community and this community <coughs> apart, but her hour of glory with the risen Christ. That's the pinnacle of her life as a disciple. <coughs> Someone asked me, you know, how am I related to Lisa? My, my, my grandmother was Stapleton, of course, from Lana, and John Stapleton, or Jack Stapleton, was my mother's first cousin. And I really got to know Lisa, I suppose, as a young lad working at the Lana shop in Temple Moor. Lisa and John did her shopping there week after week. And you know, it could be a busy place, there could be a lot of customers there, especially the weekend. Can you when Lisa came in, she would talk all day. <laughs> and it's been a hurry, there might be things to be done, but Lisa would love to chat, not with you particularly, but whoever would be there. And so she would kind of hold the thing up a little bit. <laughs> but you know, that's the person she was. She loved people, she loved to chat. <coughs> She loved to share the story, get a good sense of humor. And that's what has endeared her to so many as well. And we remember that with great fondness as we bid her farewell today. Now she was lucky to have her family care for her so much and you know care for her at home in Latin up to a week or so before she died. Her slime has been her home all of her life, bad and low and Latin. And she would be missed by all in La Halle. You know, and really, when you go in La Halle, I was only really saying it yesterday, it's really a community in itself. So many people that you never would think live in there. It's a real community. And she's been part and parcel of them for so many, many years. She had a lovely, gentle presence. She would be missed by all who knew her, and especially here, or as she has lived all of her life. You should be especially missed by your family. Because you know, your mother is always there. And the longer they live, the more they are part of your life, and the more they are part of your extended family life as well, or grandchildren as well. So home in that will never be the same because she was gone. But our call today, you know, as we gather to celebrate this mass for each today. Our call as disciples of Jesus, and that's a call to all of us. The call is to live as he lived and to follow his example. <coughs>
as the reading says today, we are called to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. Not always easy to do, but I think that Eta lived her life and her faith as one journey. Her faith guided her life, and her life gave witness to her belief in Jesus Christ. And you know, she understood that too, to walk humbly with her God. Because she knew her need of God and wasn't afraid to ask for his help and guidance on the journey of life. So today as we gather to bid her farewell, we again reflect on the scripture that boss in Jesus' own words, now the hour has come. And for Isa, our hour has come. Our hour of glory. And our prayer is that she will rest in peace. So we invite you to stand and we will have our prayers of faith. And maybe you also are coming to lead the prayer of the life of God. So God our Heavenly Father, as we gather here today in sorrow, in grief, but also in thanksgiving for the life of the one we love. We bring our prayers with confidence before you today. We pray for Isha, the baptism she was given the pledge of eternal life. May she now be admitted to the company of the saints, especially St. Jude, to whom she had away in the ocean. Lord, hear us. Lord, May the God of all consolation be with all who are mourning the loss of Isha. May he give them the courage and strength to live through this time of suffering. <coughs> and may he give them a deep peace which only he can give. Lord, hear us. Oh, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and Doris martyrs, and with all the saints, with St. John the Baptist, and to those who come to the Lord and most constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church and earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kieran, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this army and of someone before you, in your compassion and mercy for follow, and gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Eta, of your call from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. And from the earth you raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our ruling bodies after the passion of his own glorious body. To all of the Catholic brothers and sisters too, and to all of our pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind and witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, that you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and takes away the sin of the world and who is the promise of eternity. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Glory and love for our Lady, you should have to remind us of the sin of the Lord. May the body of the Lord of Christ be the full sin of our last night.
Eugene and uh, Father uh, Peter would be on either side of Eden's coffin, and then I would go from either side to district toilet If anybody who needs to receive uh, the low gluten and body communion, we have them here on the altar.
gregarious person who loved people. And I remember one memorable occasion she came up to my house in Dublin for Christmas. We went to Mass on Christmas morning, and when we returned to the house, neither of us were, <coughs> neither of us were actively engaged in the preparation of the Christmas dinner. And after a while, my mother said, It would be nice to see our later Mass. It would be nice to get another Mass on Christmas. <laughs> I was now, I didn't hear this idea with any great enthusiasm. No, it was an hour for the like the three wise men. I bet we'd already paid two pounds on the occasion. But then I remember that there was usually a later mass in St. Matthew's Church in Valley Firm, and Father Seamus Ryan, a wonderful human being, and a man I considered a friend, and normally said that mass. So we headed for St. Matthew's Church, and when we got there, the mass had already started. Father Seamus was presiding, and the church was packed. We made our way up to the church and we squeezed into a pew somewhere up near the top. My mother was on the outside of the pew, and when it came to make the sign of peace, she shook hands with everybody around her. Then she stepped out of the pew, and she walked down the good part of the main body of the church, shaking outstretched hands. <laughs> I think it was an occasion when my mother's spontaneity, her love of people, her total and self-conscious personality were perfectly exemplified. And when the mass was over, that are shamed with outside meeting and greeting. And my mother would also take an interest in sport, particularly the game of hurling. She thought hurling was the game of the gods, but would have always thought of the fortunes of temporary teams down through the years, and also the local club here, Blackmore Tessaline. So I said to her, you know, Father Shane was played hurling for Limerick. That's right, he said I did, and I marked Christy Ring in a monster final. And my mother said, Imagine asking a priest to marry Christy Ring. Father Shemus thought this was absolutely hilarious. And he said, Why, do you not think a priest would be up to that job? <laughs> I'm going to talk for a moment and she said, Well, I don't know, but I don't think John Doyle ever went for the priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> My mother simply loved people. She loved meeting them, interacting with them, connecting with them. The ultimate people person. She took a great interest in the lives of her <coughs> grandchildren, Shane, Dara, and Michael, and was a really close, loving bond uh, <coughs> between herself and the three lads. And when her great grandchildren came along in recent years, it reinvigorated and re energized her. She took great delight in Evelyn, uh, Aoife, and me. <coughs> And if she wasn't seeing them person, personally, she loved to look at pictures and videos of them on the phone. She was eagerly looking forward to the birth of her fourth great grandchild in July, but sadly now she won't get to see the new arrival. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank a number of people, starting with the priest who officially here today, um, the altar service, Jerry Mackey, the sacristan. Um, my mother's sister in law, Evelyn Brennan, for the beautiful music, and Patricia Maher for the wonderful singing. To the carers who came into my mother's house over the years, they were friends as much as carers, and she loved to see each and every one of them walk through the door. I know I'm probably going to forget somebody here now, and I apologize in advance, but I would like to thank Christine Ryan, uh, Ursula Tracy, and Campy from this parish. From Temple Moore, Magella Cummins, Mary Quinlan, uh, Esther O'Brien, and from Knock and Brennan. There was such a lifeline for my mother, and it really brought home to me um, the, vital, uh, the vital work that carers do in many elderly people to remain in their own homes. And to, to the uh, Midlands Hospital in Port Leash, where my mother was admitted last Tuesday, and last, sorry, last Tuesday week, the 2nd of, the 2nd of April. And typical of someone who loved life so much, she fought an insurmountable battle so valiantly for six days. I would like to thank uh, the doctors and nurses in Port Leash for doing everything we could for her, and also the other staff in the hospital who were so good and kind to family members as we maintained bedside uh, vigil. When I was uh, in Dublin, I remember I used to uh, bring my mother on the phone, and I would always end the phone conversation using a particular Irish phrase. I 
friends who never started using this or his friends myself, and we've brought him to form a conversation the same way. And when I came down to deliver her at the start of COVID, if I was leaving the house or if I was already out of the house and speaking to her on the phone, again we would both finish the conversation using the same Irish phrase. So one final time now, I just want to say, Slán agus Bagat. Thank you.